Last night, the fifth Democratic debate took place. Um, it was hosted by uh, MSNBC. It's really disappointing. Um, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's not really an effective debate. Um, there were just not many good questions asked. I mean, a debate, you're supposed to um, listen to these candidates and find out what the different opinions are on, you know, those important topics. But the questions asked last night were disappointing. And um, I mean, things like impeachment, right, Donald Trump. I mean, people, these candidates, they agreed on impeachment, right? So why would you bother wasting the precious time on topics like this? So let's see um, the what were considered as key takeaways from the debate last night. This is uh, written by um, Eric Bradner, Dan Marica, and Gregory Craig from CNN. So let's see. In fact, voters were overwhelmingly focused on finding a candidate they believe can beat Donald Trump. So the leading contenders offer their clearest arguments yet about how they plan to do that. So apparently CNN was happy about um, those contenders' performance, which is ridiculous. All right, so um, let's see. Conrad has said Democrats cannot win without rebuilding former President Obama's diverse coalition of supporters. Okay. The question black women voters have for us as candidate is where you've been and uh, what are you going to do? Harris said. So the former Vice President Joe Biden also staked a claim to the Obama coalition but stumbled into an awkward moment while doing so. And yeah, see, Joe Biden always tried to, you know, take advantage of the Obama um, legacy, so to speak. Um, but whenever there's something wrong, you know, <laughs> with what Obama administration did, he said, oh, I was just the vice president. It's none of my business. So he's trying to take all the credits, but denying all the faults. Um, formal, uh, okay, so Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders um, used his closing statement to try to reach Latinos, which is a crucial part of the electorate uh, in Nevada. The third state to vote in the Democratic nominating process and key for Biden, as well as for California and Texas, which will award a huge swath of delegates on Silver Tuesday. I'm the son of an immigrant, he said. I have some sense of an immigrate, immigrant experience. I will stand with the 11 million undocumented immigrants in the country. Montana Senator Amy Klobuchar made her most forceful case yet that her history of winning in red and purple portions of the um, Midwest, despite the reality that in politics women have to work harder, gave her a strong claim to centralist lane in the 2020 primary field. And South Bend, um, Indiana, Mayor P. Buttigieg has rocketed to the top of the Iowa polls. Okay, so Buttigieg, P. Buttigieg has actually uh, has been risen uh, significantly in, in recent weeks. Okay, so he's, he's topping, I think, uh, at least one or two of the polls. So Mayor P. fended off Klobuchar's characterization of him as merely a local of official and questions about his virtually non-existent support from African Americans. Okay. Here are eight takeaways from the fifth presidential debate. Okay. Buttigieg on defense. So Buttigieg's rise to the top of the Iowa polls meant that he entered that debate with the biggest target on his back. So it was actually a relief at the end because the attacks were apparently were not quite effective. So those attacks came primarily later in the debate because first the candidates were just answering questions from the moderators. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, it was a quite relief uh, from the campaign that uh, Mayor Pete uh, was unheard for the most part. Um, and so the first the first contender trying to take him down, P. Buttigieg, is uh, Amy Klobuchar, uh, who questioned his experience and uh, tried it the small city mayor as the local official. Um, Mayor Pete responded by quickly pivoting to an attack on Washington. So he said, oh, Washington experience is not the only experience that matters. There's more than 100 years of Washington experience on the stage, and where are we right now as a country? Um, Tals Gabbard, the Hawaii uh, representative, also took a swing, saying 
Buttigieg lacked judgment when he suggested using the military, the US military to help combat um, cartel violence along the border of uh, Securities Corporation. Buttigieg called her claim outlandish, even by the standards of today's politics. And then he attacked her for meeting um, the dictator, the, the Syrian president um, Bashar al-Assad. And Harris um, knocked Buttigieg for his struggles while counting uh, while courting um, black voters. British accepted her criticism, I completely agree, he said to um, Harris, and then he acknowledged that the lack of African-American support is a problem, but said he will welcome the challenge. Um, and then there were more subtle jabs, like when Booker noted that he's the only um, other Rose scholar in the race, but um, overall the uh, the most engaged, for, for, for the you know most engaged viewers, those moments, might not have registered. Okay. So P was, was okay, so he was probably happy. And Klobuchar's electability argument. So she had a clear goal. Uh, Plan serious doubt in Democratic uh, voters' minds that Biden is the most electable candidate and that Buttigieg is the voice of the Midwest. She hit those marks more effectively than ever before. So Klobuchar, uh, by contrasting herself with Buttigieg, said that um, women have to work harder and that that's a fact. And then she transitioned into the hard work she's done, winning even the red and purple congressional districts in her battleground state and then playing a role in the passage of long list legislation in the Senate. She also took a board shot at the progressive policy goals like Medicare for all and free college tuitions. Apparently that was targeting um, one of the front runners, um, Bernie Sanders. I'm not going to go for things just because they sound good on the bumper sticker and then throw in a free car. It's far from clear uh, that Klobuchar changed her trajectory in any major way. Um, so, uh, but the Mon uh, Minnesota Sanders play is for the center lane, and on Wednesday she mounted her clear's case yet that her record and electoral history in Minnesota are assets Biden and British don't have. Um, I'm not sure she's pandering into anyone uh, you know, for a VP position yet. Uh, given his current stand, uh, that might actually be her best bet. All right, Biden stumbles. Okay, that's funny. So Biden walked himself into several awkward moments, um, as before. So one of them was when, when he talked about uh, domestic violence. Biden said, oh, um, he had written the Violence Against Women Act of 1994, but then said of continuing to battle, combat the problem, we have to keep punching at it and punching at it and punching at it. Actually, in that context, people may may um, misunderstood as punching at the, with the women um, in, in domestic violence. So it, it was it was not not good. Another um, Biden stumbling moment um, was when he attempted to reference former Illinois Senator um, Carol Braun, who was a strong backer of his campaign, claimed to have been endorsed by the only African-American woman who was ever being elected to the United States Senate. Booker um, quickly said that's not true, and Harris was laughing, <laughs> the second black woman elected to the Senate. I am standing by here. <laughs> she Correcting himself, Biden said, I said the first. <laughs> See, that, that's that's actually the, one of the moments there's some debate still there. In the former vice president uh, also had strong moments. Much of the debate's second half focused on foreign policy. And at one point, um, you know, uh, in a moment that would mark a significant break from U.S. policy, Biden pledged to end weapons sales to Saudi Arabia and treat the country as like the pariah that they are. So I think that was, that was pretty good. She, he was very firm on that. Um, very clear message. Booker hits Biden and on the marijuana um, legalization. So this is actually uh, another debate moment. So um, I actually would, would have liked to um, get Andrew Yang involved. Uh, see, that's where the moderators would, would be used for. Um, is you know you should know the different policies that you know all these candidates have, right? And then um, you let them to talk about the relevant policies. Um, so here, Booker said that. Um, I thought you might have been high when you said it, <laughs> meaning on the marijuana legalization. Uh, so see, the booker was trying to be funny. And um, yeah, so Biden here, um, 
touting his endorsements from black congressional leaders and his strong poll numbers with African-American voters nationwide, especially in South Carolina, said, I'm talking to that Obama coalition. I come out of the black community in terms of my support. So Booker was arguing that, you know, legalization of marijuana is a matter of racial justice, basically, and that Democrats wouldn't be able to rebuild the coalition of voters assembled by Obama if black voters were alienated. He specifically pointed to a drop in black turnout in Wisconsin in the uh, 2016 election. So Biden, you know, made her, his comments uh, regarding uh, that. Next, Bernie Sanders keeps climate change in the conversation. The question about was uh, about Democrats would chant lock him up at the mansion of President Trump and whether he approved. But Sanders had something else on his mind, climate change. When you talk about the climate crisis, Sanders said, the no one was. The overwhelming majority of the American people know that it is real. They know we have to take on the fossil fuel industry. They know we have to transform our energy system away from fossil fuel. Later on, when the moderators did ask about climate change, centers took exception with their feigning. Um, your questioner said, what are we going to do in decades? We don't have decades. What is that? What the scientists are telling us is, if we don't get our act together within the next eight or nine years, we're talking about cities all over the world, major cities going underwater. And he went on to take off the potential catastrophes that lie ahead, in particular the potential for a climate refugee crisis that um, sets off a national security uh, emergency. Sanders also took a page from his Green New Deal plan, suggesting that fossil fuel companies should face legal scrutiny for misleading the public. They have lied and lied. Uh, when they have the evidence that their carbon products were destroying the planet. Um, and maybe, Senator said, we should think about prosecuting them as well. Um, okay. Obama legacy looms large. Uh, President Obama left office three years ago, but on Wednesday night, his legacy hovered over the Democratic uh, vying for the job he once held. So, uh, Pete Buttigieg uh, tried to question about unity towards the former uh, President Harris defended Obama as a way to attack Gabbard and a number of other candidates that uh, Biden touted their ability to rebuild the coalition of voters that elected Obama. Um, see, that, that's the Obama card that everyone uh, tries to play. Um, so, see, that's not so important, I guess. Impeachment. Oh, jeez. Dominance the day. Um, for the first time, the Democratic presidential debate was not the biggest political story on the day it took place. <laughs> yeah, because that that day is, is all about uh, the explosive testimony in the House impeachment inquiry. Um, dominated the headlines and cable news all day. And even though there is no real disagreement among the Democratic candidates that Trump should be impeached, it was the first topic moderator raised. See, they're wasting time. I mean, it's unanimous agreement, right? Trump among those Democratic candidates. Uh, so why bother? And if you recall, Andrew Yang said that every time we talk about Donald Trump, um, we're losing because we're not presenting a you know positive um, way forward. We're not providing our vision for the country to be united and to move forward. And therefore, we're losing every time we talk about Trump, even in the context of impeachment. And that's probably why the MSNBC moderates don't like um, Andrew Yang, because I recall that it's probably Rachel. Um, yeah, Andrew Yang said that to Rachel, and, you know, half or more of her shows were about Trump impeachment. So how could she or anyone else be happy in, uh, about Andrew Yang in that situation? And that might be one reason why Andrew Yang didn't get his first question 30 minutes into the debate last night, which is really, really disappointing. Um, all right, exhaustion on healthcare. The first four Democratic debates featured lengthy clashes between the progressive and moderate candidates over health care, whether to push for Medicare for all or instead attempt go to the less costly route of expanding Obamacare with the public option. Nobody wanted a fifth round. <laughs> the candidates didn't press to go there. The audience, at least those chattering about it on social media, had no appetite for it. And the moderators only hit health care in uh, a perfunctory way. And that's disappointing too, because Warren just had her details about the hair, um, 
health care plan. And um, so why not asking about those specifics, right? Because in the previous debates, we didn't get to see the details um, between Warren's plan versus Biden's or even Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders has been pretty open about it, right? And the cost, uh, I mean, not the cost, but the taxes will increase. He's very clear about it. Warren insists, I mean, Warren at first was, you know, not directly addressing the question, yes or no question, like BP Buttigieg attacking her, right? A yes and no question, right, about whether the taxes on the middle class would increase, did not get a yes and no answer. Um, and, and you know, um, Warren was just beating around the corner saying, um, oh, the total cost would decrease. And, that, and now that the details are out, you know, we expect, I mean, most audience expect to hear um, these details and see which, whose plan is more viable. Um, so that's disappointing. And, okay, so these are the highlights, um, the key takeaways that CNN um, considered uh, for last night's debates, which is disappointing because there's no mention of Andrew Yan. It's barely any mention of Tom Steyer or Tulsi Gabbard. Um, okay, so let's see another an article uh, who won tonight's uh, first Democratic debates for uh, November 20th. This is from uh, heavy.com. Okay, so um, it was the first, uh, fifth debate. Uh, there are 10 candidates and okay, I like this. So who do you think won tonight's debate? Vote in the poll, which is at the end of this article. Okay, please do that and let's see what the numbers um, tell us. The candidates uh, were, oh, Joe Biden, Cory Booker, Pete Buttigieg, Tulsi Gabbard, Kamala Harris, Andy Klobuchar, Bernie Sanders, Tom Steyer, Elizabeth Warren, and Andrew Yang. So the debate um, started with questions about Donald Trump's impossible impeachment. Okay. Warren said that Trump had obstructed uh, justice and supported impeachment. Klobuchar said she called for an impeachable proceeding and wants, wants to review each count individually. Sanders said, Oh, Trump maybe the most is the most corrupt president in the history of US, United States. But campaign shouldn't just um, be consumed with issues about Trump because of other issues facing Americans too. That's a good point. And Pete Buttigieg pointed out a question regarding Trump and veterans donations and said that the country would need to fight for other crises too. Biden. Um, commented that he's learned Trump and Putin don't put, want him to be president. Okay, so Biden is using Trump in a, in a way that favor, would favor himself. Um, Harris said that we need the same set of rules for everyone and we need justice back to America for all people. No one is above law. And before Yang, Booker, and Gabriel Steyer could be asked a question, Warren was asked a second question. See, that's pretty unfair. Then Booker was given his first question, where he agreed that estate tax and capital gain taxes needed to be raised, but he wasn't in agreement with Warren's idea on wealth taxes. Booker also called for a minimum wage to be raised, but wants the economy to provide equality and opportunity as well. Warren then asked, um, <laughs> was asked a third question um, before an initial question was asked to Gabber, Steyer, and yeah. Um, so, yeah. all right, 24 minutes in, Gabber finally got her first question. Um, she said she believes that the party needs to be put back into the hands of the people. Harris claimed Gabber spoke full time against Democrats four years ago, but Gabber said that Harris was simply focused on smears and it sounded like Harris would continue regime change wars. And at uh, 29 minutes in, Steyer got his first question. He said he put together coalitions of Americans to take on cooperation power. He also said he's the only one on the stage who would, ta uh, who would talk about term limits, which is not true, by the way. Andrew Yang has 160 policies, and that is one of them. See, I, I feel like uh, Tom Steyer or other people are, are trying to steal um, Andrew Yang's lines or even his policies, his talking points. Um, which, which is fine. I mean, Yan said that he doesn't need to win. I mean, either he wins or another candidate will start to sound a lot like him. Yan got his first question 30 minutes in. Wow, the last one. First, he supported Steyer's climate change actions. And then, okay, so I, I really like that. Yeah, and then he, he said that AI, climate change, and uh, military drones, um, non-state actors were among the greatest threat to um, a new president that would face.
Say in your first call with Russian President Vladimir oh, that, Putin. That's yeah. <laughs> well, first I'd say I'm sorry I beat your guy. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. We're not sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> and second, I would say the days of meddling in American elections are over, and we will take any undermining of our democratic processes as an act of hostility and aggression. The American people would back me on this. We know that they've found an underbelly and they've been clawing at it, and it's made it so that we can't even trust our own democracy. The third thing I would say is that we're going to live up to our international commitments. We're going to recommit to our partnerships and alliances, including NATO. And it was James Madness that said that the more you invest in diplomats in diplomacy, the less you have to spend on ammunition. National consensus, not just against Russia, but also to build a coalition that will help us put pressure on China in terms of their treatment of their ethnic minorities and what's going on in Hong Kong. I want to propose a new world data organization, like a WTO for data because right now unfortunately we're living in a world where data is the new oil and we don't have our arms around it these are the ways that we'll actually get russia to the table and make it so they have to join the international community and stop uh, resisting appeals to the world order thank you mr yang rachel yeah i really like Anne's Jan's answer um so that was a tough question i mean how like what would you say to um put in right first call and Yan had a joke there. I was I, I thought it was really good. And then he also talked about you know these important issues, right? Like data, right? AI. Um, how do we you know rival against China um, and and Russia? Um, so and and he also proposed this innovative idea of international organization like WTO for data, right? Um, okay. So near the end of the debate, Tulsi Gabbard and Pete Buttigieg had their own showdown when. Um, Buttigieg said, uh, she sat down with dictators and Gabbard said, oh, um, you didn't have courage as president to meet with both adversaries and friends. Um, so they discussed also uh, issues like paid family leave, um, house issues, foreign policy, taxes, and more tonight. They talked about the endless wars and senators said it was indeed time to bring the troops home, but he wouldn't do it through a um, 3 a.m. tweet like Trump did. 538 has said that primary debates can change the outcome of the election, especially during the early days debates. In fact, nearly 60% of people um, in studies have shifted their choice after watching a debate, especially if it's earlier on an election cycle and the viewers don't know as much about the candidates yet. I think that is probably still true, and that's why it's not fair for the mainstream media to um, not give Andrew Yang and Telsey Gabbers, you know, these um, Candidates with grassroots support sufficient airtime. It's just not democracy. Not, not, it's not good at all. Um, sometimes it's tough to predict uh, who will get the most attention in debate. So in June, Tulsi Gabbard was the most Googled candidate. Kamala Harris trended after her big debate with Biden. And in June, Andrew Yang trended the next day on Twitter because of his claims that his mic was turned off. In July, Marianne Williamson was a surprise debate star after a statement about uh, reparations. And in September, but that didn't turn into an um, increase in, in polling number in, in that case. Um, in September, Julian Castro got a lot of attention because of his spars with Biden, and Biden trended after they recommended um, that viewers listen to their record players every night. In October, Sanders was a big trend because it was his first debate after his heart attack and did really well. And news broke right after the debate that Alexandra Ocasio Cortez was going to endorse him. So, who do you think was the ultimate winner of tonight's debate, or last night's debate? Was it the candidate who spoke the most or had the most mean worthy statements? Was it the candidate who sparred with another candidate in a way that really grabbed viewers' attention? Okay, so now uh, it's your time to vote, and this I already voted, and you know I voted for. Um, and okay, let's see the current uh, numbers. Andrew Yang, 40%, over 40% of all the voters online. See, that's how polling should be done nowadays. It's 21st century. It's almost 20 years into 21st century. Um, Bernie Sanders, you know, he, of course, he has, you know, got the historical record um, donations, right, number of donors. Um, 
my booty games, and I'm surprised he's coding really well. Tom's Gabbard also has a lot of online supporters. Okay. Um, and Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren actually did very poorly in this um, online poll. Okay. That's it for today. So, um, what do you think? Um, like and subscribe, and uh, comment below.